you for joining me in what I hope will be a very interesting conversation. We all know that conflict is incredibly damaging. It is damaging for us individually. It is damaging for our families. It is damaging for our communities. It is damaging for our countries. And it is damaging for the world at large. Recently, the head of the International Monetary Fund warned that we as a society are entering an age of breakdown. That can be a very discouraging message. But in fact, it should be a message that requires us to redouble our efforts towards building more peaceful societies. During this week, we hope to bring to you a series of conversation, which we hope will inspire you to take action individually, together with others, so that we are constantly and continually developing and moving towards an ever more fair and equitable society. Today, I am delighted to have the opportunity to speak with Myvand Rayab. Myvand was the inaugural uh, executive director of the Afghan Institute of Civil, for Civil Society. He is a Fulbright scholar, having accomplished and, and obtained his master's in public administration at Millbury College, is a lawyer, and a fellow in democracy and human rights at the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom. He has spent many decades, perhaps not that many decades, <laughs> but decades working on civil society work and ensuring a peaceful society, and in particular, work in Afghanistan. He has served as the inaugural co-chair of the South Asia Regional Center Hub for Innovation for Change, a global civil society initiative for promoting and protecting civil space. Myvan, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank Let's... you, Zoe, for the opportunity. It's a pleasure to uh, be with you on this discussion. Thank you. Um, let us start, Myvan, with just tell us a little bit about the work that you've done in this space over the last little while. Uh, well, uh, as I said in your introduction, uh, Zuli, uh, I've, my background and my work has uh, primarily focused uh, on building civil society in my native country of Afghanistan. Uh, for many years, uh, you know, I started my work as a youth activist, uh, established a, a youth uh, group that worked on peace building, um, conflict resolution, and human rights promotion in northern Afghanistan, where I come from. And then I started to work uh, with international organizations that, were, that worked on uh, civil society development in Afghanistan. Uh, I helped... Uh, over 300 organizations of civil society in Afghanistan to uh, become better at what they do and build their capacity, make sure that they have the resources and the skills that they to do their work. And then, as you said, uh, one of my last engagements with Afghan civil society was uh, my my role as the executive director of the Afghanistan Institute for Civil Society, uh, which uh, was established in 2014, what support from the AKDN and other international organizations in Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. So from that wide experience, what would be some of the key learnings that you think we can adopt in our daily lives as we look to this future uh, that awaits us? Uh, I think, uh, as you said in your uh, introduction, it's a very difficult time globally but also particularly in countries uh, with a long history of conflict, like my country in Afghanistan, but also many other countries uh, in the region that right now are um, uh, struggling with uh, long years of conflict, war, and uh, uh, 
it's a difficult time in in this period the role of civil society organizations and community organization to try to uh, address the root causes of for the uh, the drivers of conflict and disputes uh, from one hand and also you know conflict is sort of um, inevitable no matter what, how much you try you know uh, conflicts and, and disputes are, are, are a reality for life but uh, communities uh, and societies can prepare better to manage the conflicts in, in a peaceful manner that uh, reduces the chances of uh, conflict turning into uh, violence and war uh, uh, affecting the life of so many people. So I think it's an, uh, right now, given what's happening globally, uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of conflict management at the political level, but I think at the grassroots level, at the community level, uh, civil society organization, grassroots organization uh, can play a big role in making sure that the drivers of conflict are, uh, are addressed at the community level, that there's a culture of trust, uh, inclusivity, um, uh, and also participation, respect among different community members that, uh, that diminishes the risk of conflict, particularly violence conflicts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you were to, to say, what do you think are the key and important areas of the root causes that we should focus on as we, as we move to or think about our, our futures? Um, I think, you know, conflicts are uh, very context specific. You know, root causes in one country can be very different from causes in other countries. Uh, for example, in my country, Afghanistan, where I've, uh, you know, for almost 20 years have been somehow involved in, 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 uh, in conflict management, uh, there are a number of things. You know, there are a sort of history of uh, and a legacy of war and conflict in the country. That's one. Uh, issues around uh, resource allocation. Uh, in that part of the world where I come from, uh, disputes over land, for example, is a major issue, a major source of conflict. Dispute, disputes over water is another uh, uh, issue. When, when, when resources are not uh, equally and equitably uh, sort of uh, allocated and distributed among different segments of society, it uh, creates uh, 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 definitely grounds for, 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 for conflict. Uh, and then there are, you know, in, in countries where, you know, the tribal ethnic issues are not addressed in an inclusive, pluralist, pluralistic way, that can also become a source of conflict. Um, in my country, for example, uh, you know, we have a very rich ethnic and like linguistic diversity in Afghanistan uh, that, you know, can be a source of a strength if, mm -hmm. if, if managed properly. But unfortunately, for, for, for many years, uh, that rich diversity uh, has become a source of conflict. Uh, and that's because there haven't been proper policies that, uh, you know, that encourages, that builds on that diversity that uh, that creates opportunities for all uh, all community members from different backgrounds, from different ethnicity, from different languages and cultures uh, to have uh, to participate in a meaningful way in a, in an inclusive uh, pluralistic society where they have equal access to opportunities to uh, uh, to resources. So in the lack of, uh, in the absence of that kind of a, an environment, uh, you see conflict um, emerging in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And it's such a, it's it's such a transferable thing, right? There's the same sort of inequity that can happen in a family, uh, one one person having more access than another, a favoritism of boys versus girls. Uh, issues that can happen in, 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 in families, they end up almost being prototypes of how it is that the whole society works, right? So we almost have to be looking at each one of us in our own families, looking at how it is that we can create uh, the, the fairest and, and, and most equitable 
distribution of of uh, of resources and 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 inclusion in 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 uh, in life overall. So uh, that's a very powerful message, right? Uh, uh, there's diversity right within our own families and 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 our own communities and our own lives uh, uh, as as we move forward. So that that message of inclusion. Uh, what are some of the lessons that your involvement with the civil society associate uh, organization has brought forward around inclusion and some of the steps that can be taken uh, to actually move that that agenda forward? I think to 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 minimize the risks of you know conflict and then conflicts turning into violence, uh, there are countries like Afghanistan presents good lessons learned, uh, uh, particularly from a civil society engagement uh, perspective. Um, I think uh, number one uh, lesson learned, I would say, it's very important that uh, community organizations, civil society groups are, uh, are supported and empowered to play a, an important role in, uh, in sort of re uh, addressing conflict and, uh, and engaging in, in dispute resolution, particularly in the absence of uh, government systems. And, you know, again, mm -hmm. in countries like mine, you know, informal justice plays a much bigger role uh, than formal uh, institutional uh, uh, justice provided by the state. So in, in, in that kind of a situation, particularly the role of civil society organizations become even more relevant to uh, uh, to uh, not only uh, provide this uh, supp supplementary role, but also to fill the gap in the absence mm -hmm. of uh, in the absence of the state uh, institutions to to provide uh, justice and rule of law and uh, conflict resolution. So that's uh, I think that's one lesson. Second, I think it's very important uh, that um, we look at the drivers of the conflict issues around. Uh, equitable access to resources, uh, education, for example, making sure that, you know, we have peace education and, and conflict manage management skills at, at schools, at, 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 uh, uh, at universities, at the community level, that the communities are uh, prepared and they have the skill set to be able to, 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 to manage, uh, uh, manage conflicts when they, uh, when they arise uh, 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 in the communities. I think third, it's important to make sure that while civil society is involved at the community level in addressing conflicts and engaging in dispute resolution, that that community level engagement is aligned with the more national level sort of strategic um, policy of the government so that there's a uh, sort of reinforcing relationship between what happens in the ground and then what's the national strategy and how the two can uh, the two can reinforce and support each other. That's another element I think that uh, we need to focus. And then lastly, I think nothing is more important than creating societies that are equitable, that are just, that are that respects diversity, uh, that that promotes promotes trust uh, uh, among among communities. And also creating this sense of shared identity mm -hmm. among communities, where they, they they have this sense of belonging that they know they all belong to, uh, despite their differences, despite their uh, different diverse ethnic backgrounds and all of that, that they belong to you know a bigger community and that there's a shared narrative uh, about the future that uh, they that they they see themselves in that future together. So th if we create that kind of an environment. I think the chances of conflicts arising and and then turning into violence uh, is going to be minim uh, minimal mm -hmm. and minimal. Mm -hmm. Now that's a very powerful lesson, and thank you very very much because it has uh, you know given me thought about how much the cab system is part of that informal system of justice and how important it is to be able to access the kind of neutral support 
that we are able to provide members of the Jamaat when they're in, the con in that process of conflict. So we don't end up elevating or escalating conflict to become intransigent, right? To be for it to become un unmanageable. Because as you said, some little conflicts are part of life. It's when it's unmanaged that it becomes uh, a, a, pro a source of problems uh, for the community at large. And, and that is where uh, the the cab system across the the, the globe that, that we participate in is able to provide that within that ethics that is the shared understanding the shared values and the shared sense of belonging to this community and working together and and we are seeing as we continue our work a lot more, international work that is happening because our Jamaat is, is also so uh, mobile and moving from, uh, from places to places. Uh, so that's a, an important part of, of how it is that work that is done at a national level, you can almost bring it back to saying how it is that we're building it in our own families, in our own communities and in our own homes over this period of, of time. Thank you, Maivin. It really has been a very interesting conversation and I have really enjoyed learning more about your work and the, the, the learnings uh, from Afghanistan, which are so applicable uh, to the rest of, of, uh, of the world and, and good lessons learned. Thank you so much, Zuli, for the opportunity. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we hope that you have found this uh, conversation interesting. Over the next uh, few days, we will be bringing to you more conversations so that we hope that you will be inspired to reflect on how it is that you in your own life can make that little bit of a contribution to, be make, to have a more equitable and fairer society so that we do not succumb to the doomsday uh, predictions of the head of the IMF as an age of breakdown, but are really looking at rebuilding, rebuilding for ourselves, building resilient communities and societies, and rebuilding to make sure that our future generations have the best possible chance to flourish. From wherever you have joined us this evening, thank you very much, and we wish you a very safe and happy day, evening, whatever it is. Thank you, and yali madad.